Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. Today I'm going to play a wonderfully dark and mysterious gypsy waltz called Vals de Niglo. <laughs> Now we'll get on to the tune in just a minute, but I first want to tell you a little bit about the background to this tune because I think it's really fascinating and it involves um, the origins of Gypsy Jazz itself. First of all, what is a Niglo? Uh, the Niglo is a, uh, it's the Gypsy word for a hedgehog and this is a kind of a symbol for the Roma. Uh, I think they see a similarity with themselves in their secretive nature. and. Um, so this is the, uh, the Waltz of the Hedgehog and it was written in the style known as Musette which was a very important style in Paris in the early part of the 20th century. So the Musette was a kind of a, um, a working class dance hall and um, the, the bands were usually led by an accordionist who would be either a Frenchman or an Italian but they were very often backed by a gypsy guitarist or banjo player and Django Reinhardt was one of the people who at the age of 12 he learnt uh, to play the banjo and started his professional career backing uh, these accordionists in the Bal Musette nightclubs and um, it, was, um, it was an interesting job because there was often no bass player and so the, the banjo or guitar had to fill in the bass line and the chords and uh, the rhythm and often little backing things as well. The, the leading gypsy accompanist in this style was Gusti Malha and it was him that wrote this, uh, this waltz and it was recorded in 1939 by Barrow Ferre with the Ferre Trio and I do recommend that you listen to that uh, original because it's, it's a really great one and uh, I'll put the link just up here. So the, uh, the musettes were originally mostly major keys but when the gypsies got their hands on them they added a lot of minors and this tune is in three parts, um, a, a, the first two parts being minor and then we've got a beautiful change to the major for the third part. And very many of the, um, the, the gypsies who played um, backing in these bands went on to play as Django did the gypsy jazz and uh, many of those leading players became uh, members of Django's um, Hot Club of Paris over the, uh, over the future years. So this, this tune and this style of music is really pivotal in the origins of Gypsy Jazz. Now let's get down to the tune. So the A section. So we're going to start just after the bar. One, two, three, one. <laughs> tricky bits here, lots of triplets apart from anything else. Um, let's just go through it again. So th this phrase I would play the D sharp with my fourth finger rather than the third finger. So there we're going third finger on the G Second finger on the F sharp, second finger down to the F natural. Bring the first finger down and up again. Fourth finger for the D sharp. And a 
phrase like that, I think a long slur. And then here, open, four, three. And here, I think, chain bowing. Repeats. Uh, let's try that with the backing, just that A section uh, repeated. section we go into major and here again lots of long slurs and here I find that it's a lot better to go into third position in order to not be rocking up and down so I'll just do that again And then a long second time bar. A stop and then back to the beginning. Um, and then the C section. Uh, so you go back to the beginning, uh, which ends. Um, and then we have a lovely change in feel from the minor feel to a very open, broad um, major feel. So we're now in the key of E major. Um, and for the dancers who have been swirling and whirling around uh, frantically for the B section in particular, this is a real relief uh, to get to the C section, which is a much more relaxing feel. Tricky one. Let's just do that slowly. So it's just first and third finger with a little fourth finger, and then second finger there. And we're bringing the fourth finger down. So and then carrying on. Two, four, two, one. And then that doesn't repeat, that goes straight back to the beginning. Let's go from the beginning of that and back to the A section. Thank you. 
two about the feel. Uh, the C section, uh, you may have noticed I did a little bit rubato, rubato there. So nice big long bows, loads of vibrato, and um, kind of drift away a little bit from the rhythm. Uh, that'd be quite nice. When it comes to the uh, the A and the B, and I think in particular the B section, you really have a choice between swinging or playing it straight. So a phrase like you can, play, if you play that swing. then it's got quite a different feel from where I'm playing basically all the quavers even. And I think I prefer the even quavers, um, but it will depend probably quite a lot on exactly how the guitars are playing. Um, but you might kind of alternate between the two, um, sometimes playing it straight and sometimes playing it swing. I'll play out with a solo, but before I do, I'll just say I hope you enjoy this. Thank you for watching, and if you want a copy of the dots, then please subscribe and send me an email. And if you like it, do uh, add some comments below. See you again soon.